Hey, Annie, just wanted to give you a heads up that I'll be going on a holiday trip with my company next week. Hey there, Monica. Thanks for letting me know about that in advance. I really appreciate your thoughtfulness. Unfortunately, Tom is coincidentally going on a work trip around the same time too. I really hope everything goes smoothly for you and my mom while you two are holding down the fort at home. Thank you for your kind words. I also hope that everything goes smoothly while both you and my husband are away on your trips for the next two weeks. It's just a bit unexpected that you both have to be away from home at the same time. But I'm sure things will work out fine. Hey, I want to apologize for my mom's behavior towards you ever since you married my brother and joined our household a year ago. Please don't take it to heart. You know how my mom can be, a little eccentric at times. But don't worry, I want you to know that Tom and I are always here for you, supporting you no matter what. Oh, Monica, I can't even find the right words to express how amazing of a sister-in-law you are. Seriously, from the depths of my heart, you're the absolute best. Hey, no need to stress, that's what sisters are here for, right? By the way, I just sent a MIL survival guide to your phone. With that, you won't have to worry about handling my mom while Tom and I are away. It's got all the tips and tricks you need. Whoa, that sounds awesome. Thanks a bunch, sis. So, what's inside that guide, by the way? I'm curious to know. Well, go ahead and check it out yourself. It's a list that features nearby cake shops and my mom's top picks from each place. You know how much she loves her sweets, right? And not just that, she truly treasures her coffee breaks. If anything comes up, just treat her to some cake and you'll be good to go. You got me, Monica. You're a genius. Honestly, this information is a lifesaver. You always know how to brighten up my day with these little things. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I better get going and start getting things ready for my vacation trip. I'll make sure to pick up a couple of souvenirs for you while I'm away. Don't worry, the trip won't be too lengthy. One week later. Annie. You have no idea how furious I am at this moment. Get your butt back home right now. I won't say it again. You damn well know the reason for my anger. Don't even think about pretending you don't know. Well, honestly, I have no idea why you're so angry. I can't read minds, you know. You missed both my 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. coffee break today. I knew it. The moment we're alone, you intentionally started this campaign of harassment against me, you beloved mother-in-law. How wicked of a person you truly are. I'm sorry, but my workload towards the end of the month has been overwhelming. And I completely forgot about your tea breaks. However, is it really fair to label me as wicked, mom? I don't think I deserve such harsh words. By the way, I did manage to buy your favorite cake during my lunch break. It's currently in the office fridge. I'll bring it home with me once I finish work. What's the point of bringing me the cake when you get home? My tea breaks are long gone, you imbecile. Do you even comprehend the meaning of the term tea break? It implies taking a break amidst work hours. I've been toiling away like a horse, taking care of all the household chores while you slack off and avoid doing any work. Don't I deserve some rest and treats for myself? Hey, I'm sorry you're shouldering all the domestic chores. But can you also understand where I'm coming from? I've got work to deal with. And there are times when I have to put in extra hours. Nevertheless, I always make it a point to do my part in the household chores before and after work. Or whenever I have a chance. Seriously, I'm doing my best to share the load with you. 
so please know that I'm not slacking off on the chores. How dare you continue with your utterly pointless excuses? Not only are you shamefully neglecting your responsibilities around the house, but you're also deliberately depriving me of the joy of having grandchildren. Just look at yourself. A 35-year-old woman who has long surpassed her prime and yet remains childless. What on earth do you think you're playing at in this household? I'm sorry, but I'm a little confused. Having children isn't something within my control, is it? I think it's unfair that you persistently pester me about this issue. Oh, can't you come up with anything other than this tired old response? Every single time I bring up this topic, you put on that miserable, pitiful face and come up with all sorts of feeble excuses just to avoid giving me grandchildren. You make me sick to my stomach, you know that? I apologize, but it's truly something beyond my control. I'm doing my best. But it's already challenging enough for me to balance the household chores and my job at the company. And let's not forget the extra task of remembering to serve you cakes during your tea breaks. It's just one more thing on my already overflowing to-do list. Honestly, I wonder why my son, Tom, chose the kind of woman like you. Considering your parents' lifespan, who knows how long you'll even be around. But hey, the sooner you pop out some kids, the better. At this rate, it wouldn't be a shocker if Tom dumped you before you finally managed to bless my son with a child. Wait, what? How can you even say something like that? You know how much I've been through and how deeply I'm still affected by the loss of my parents. Those painful memories continue to haunt me to this day. It's really not nice of you at all to make such remarks about my parents. They mean the world to me, and I hold them close to my heart. Oh, give me a break with your pathetic sob story. I've heard you whine endlessly about how your precious mommy died of cancer when you were just a kid. And how your daddy conveniently keeled over from a heart attack a decade later when you hit 20. But let's face it, what's the point of having a wife who can't even breed? And if you're not destined for a long life like your useless parents, then maybe it's high time I suggest my son dump you and find a woman who's actually worth his time. Mom, if I were in your shoes, I really wouldn't go down this path of saying such hurtful things. Remember how Tom and Monica reacted the last time you made similar comments? It didn't end well, did it? What? Now you're resorting to threatening your own mother-in-law? Tell me, what poison have you been whispering in my son's and daughter's ears that made them turn against me? I still vividly recall how Monica slammed her hand on the table and scolded me for simply stating the fact that you'll probably have a short lifespan like your parents. She even had the audacity to tell me that you're a wonderful person, I can't believe it. I know you're probably spreading false rumors about me, painting me as a terrible mother-in-law. Aren't you? It's utterly incomprehensible that my own son married a conniving and deceitful woman like you. Look, I'm not the kind of person who would ever sink so low as to fabricate lies about anyone, and you know that. Besides, you're well aware that Tom and Monica fully support me. So please, refrain from making these snide comments because, in the end, they'll only hurt you more than they hurt me. What? How dare you speak to your mother-in-law in such a disrespectful manner, you despicable woman. I swear, with just one phone call. I can make Tom kick you out of this house, do you hear me? Annie. Come back home immediately and let your mother-in-law teach you a thing or two about how to behave like a decent human being. Your behavior is completely unacceptable. And you're way out of line, do you understand? Annie. Three days later. Annie. What on earth are you doing sitting at home like a lazy cow? It's absolutely disgraceful how you're skipping work while Monica and Tom are working tirelessly to support this family. 
I see right through your plan to slack off and become a freeloader, lounging around at home and mooching off my son and daughter's hard-earned money. Get out of your room this instant, you repulsive leech. Mom, please understand that I'm not feeling well. So could you please stop banging on my door and yelling at me so aggressively? I'm trying to find some peace and relaxation here. And your behavior is only worsening my headache. Oh, you're tired, huh? No surprise there, considering you can't even have kids with that kind of exhaustion. How do you expect to have children if you're constantly worn out like that? Who knows if you'll even live long enough to grace me with grandchildren. Frankly, it might be better if you don't. Because then I can find my son a superior woman compared to you. Someone more stunning and healthier than you could ever dream of being. Someone who actually knows how to have kids. Hey, Mom, can you give me a break, please? I've already mentioned that I'm not feeling well and I really need some rest. Can you cut me some slack and understand? Oh, so not feeling well is your excuse for justifying your laziness? I suppose from now on, any time you don't feel like doing something, you'll just pull out the tired card and conveniently avoid your responsibilities as a daughter-in-law, right? How incredibly convenient for you! Mom, it's not about making excuses. Can't you understand that I'm genuinely feeling unwell and I need some time to lie down? I promise I'll get back to work as soon as I'm able to. Please, just give me a little bit of understanding and patience. Are you stupid or what? Do you even have a clue what time it is right now? My tea break time has long passed, for your information. So stop lounging around, open this damn door, and get off your lazy behind to fetch me my favorite chocolate cake, immediately. I won't accept no for an answer, so quit pretending to be sick, you disgraceful woman. Stop making so much noise, you idiot. Huh? What did you just say? I say, stop making so much noise and disturbing my peace, you idiot. Don't you even realize that you're being selfish like a child right now? Just shut up and listen to me for once, all right? I only have one month left to live, so go buy your own damn cake, you fool. What kind of attitude is this? And what do you mean by you only have one month left to live? You know what? I can't take it anymore. The doctor says it might be cancer, and I'm not feeling well but you keep nagging me to go buy your stupid cake. Enough is enough. And stop bothering me about the kids, too. Just leave me alone, you idiot. Oh, look at you and your insolent attitude, you pathetic daughter-in-law. Just you wait until I show these text messages to my son and daughter. They'll definitely put you in your place, and I can't wait to see it happen. I'm positively thrilled about it. What? Even after I shared with you that I have cancer, you remain indifferent? What kind of heartless monster are you? What do you expect me to do? Act all worried, shed tears, and play into your sob story? Give me a break! You know very well that I predicted this day would come a long time ago, right? I even warned my son about it. I told him that you would end up just like your parents, dying at a young age, and guess what? I was absolutely right all along. So, all this time, you, you actually want me to die? How could you be so heartless? Just face it, it's your destiny to meet an early demise, written in the stars. And there's no way you can change fate. So why don't you do us all a favor and a good little daughter-in-law by staying the hell away from me and my family, huh? Several days later. Mom, what on earth are you doing? Why are you throwing my belongings around like that? What's with the shocked expression? I've made up my mind that you're no good for my son, which is why you're not welcome to live in this house anymore. 
so gather your belongings and get the hell out of here. I'll give you one measly hour, no more, no less. Frankly, I was hoping you'd take the initiative and leave on your own accord. But it seems like a brainless mule like you couldn't grasp my intentions. That's why I had to take matters into own hands and kick you out myself. What are you talking about? How could you do this to me? Have I done something wrong? Now you're asking me such a dumb question? You said it loud and clear that you've got just one month left to live, right? So what's the freaking point of keeping you around in this house any longer? I know facing reality is tough, but your death is inevitable. So why the hell are you still clinging to my son like a leech? If you continue to stay here, you're only going to make my son miserable. So do me a favor and get the hell out, that's the absolute least you could do for Tom. If you even still consider him your husband. What? Who gave you the authority to make all the decisions on your own? Have you even bothered to ask Tom for his opinion? Do you honestly believe he would agree to you throwing me out of the house like this? Oh, believe me, I've consulted my son already, and you know what? He's ecstatic to kick out a parasite like you. Just face the reality, you're nothing but a worn-out rag now, and you mean absolutely nothing to my son. What do you mean? Are you saying? Tom actually agreed to the idea of kicking me out of the house? Of course he did. In fact, it was Tom himself who came up with the idea. And you know what's even more fascinating? He went ahead and signed the divorce papers, which clearly indicates he wants to sever all ties with you. W what? Divorce papers? That's right. Believe me, I spilled the beans to Tom about your cancer, and boy, you can't even fathom how furious he got. He admitted that he was a complete idiot for marrying an incompetent woman like you, and he's overjoyed to be rid of you. He even apologized to me for his past behavior and begged for my forgiveness. Oh, I've always known Tom is a good little boy who does whatever his mommy tells him to do. No, you're absolutely lying. I know Tom inside and out, and he's not the kind of person who would abandon someone in a difficult situation. Especially when that someone is his wife. Yeah, yeah, keep making excuses. But how do you explain these divorce papers with Tom's signature on them? Just admit it, my son genuinely despises you. And that's why you need to get the hell out of my house immediately, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now, vanish, you filthy pig. I don't want to see your face for another minute in this house. Tomorrow. Hey, Annie. What the hell are you still doing lingering around my house, you utterly worthless piece of crap? Don't you have an ounce of shame in you? Wasn't it crystal clear when I explicitly told you to get the hell out of my house as soon as possible? No, Becky, you're completely mistaken. The one who needs to leave is you, not me. What in the world are you spouting off? This is my house. Who do you think you are to dictate that I should leave, huh? No, Becky, I think you're mistaken, or maybe you're doing it on purpose. But let me remind you that this is Tom's house, not yours. I know that you're in the final stages of cancer, right? So you're probably as frail as a deflated balloon at this point. You know what? One little shove down the stairs and you'll be nothing but a lifeless corpse. But then again, why should I even bother with such a pointless act? You're already on your deathbed, so it's better for me to play the role of a dutiful mother-in-law and eagerly await the day you kick the bucket. Hey, Becky, hate to burst your bubble, but I had a chat with my husband. And he made it clear that he never agreed to kicking me out or signed any divorce papers. Seems like this whole eviction plan is your doing, huh? You probably went ahead and forged his signature on those documents or something. Knowing your character, 
I wouldn't put it past you to pull off something as low as that. What? How dare you go behind my back and talk to my son about this? You know he's on a business trip, and you still bothered him with such a trivial matter? What kind of wife are you? What do you expect? Do you think I'm just going to stay silent and do whatever you say? I'm not a fool, you know. But it doesn't add up. He must have heard about your impending death, right? So logically, he would do what any normal person would do and dump you right away. Or perhaps, you deliberately kept your impending death a secret from Tom just to trap him in a miserable relationship with you. What a despicable and self-centered woman. Scoundrels like you will never find happiness. Well, when you think about it, you don't have much time left to live anyway. So I guess you can stay in my house for a little while longer and do all the chores for me until you kick the bucket. Ha ha ha. You seem to be having a grand old time fantasizing about my demise, huh? Have you heard the news? Tom just got back from his business trip, and he's right here with me at the hospital. Huh? Tom just got home? But his work trip wasn't even supposed to be over yet. What the hell are you doing at the hospital with my son, you wicked witch? Why are you dragging my precious son into your mess? Do you actually want him to suffer by witnessing you live out the remainder of your pitiful life? If you're dying, it's your own damn fault. Don't you dare think about involving my son in your twisted drama. Well, here's some bad news for you, I'm not actually dying at all. Turns out, it was nothing more than a misdiagnosis. The doctor realized they had mixed up my medical records with another patient who happened to share the same name and date of birth as me. After discovering the error, both the doctor and the hospital director offered a sincere apology to me and Tom for the mistake. What? So, you're not actually dying? Well, what the heck happened then? Why did you end up going to the hospital? Well, after that, I was referred to another hospital. And after a checkup, the doctors confirmed that I'm pregnant. What did you just say? You're pregnant? But that's just impossible. How could you even get pregnant? I mean, aren't you supposed to be infertile? Why would you assume that? Just because I haven't had kids yet doesn't mean I'm incapable of having one, you know. I can't believe this. There's absolutely no way someone like you could ever have a happy ending. Women like you don't deserve happiness. Just get the hell out of my house and stay away from my son. All you do is drag him down and make his life miserable. I know you're destined to die sooner or later, just like your pathetic parents. Wow, honestly. I really don't even understand why you hate me that much. Yeah, you got it. It's true that I absolutely despise you. Believe me, my hatred for you runs deeper than you can even fathom. In fact, I've hated you since the very moment you stepped foot into my house. I've always wished for the day when you would disappear from this world, just like your worthless parents. Now you're really showing your true colors, huh, Becky? You really are something else, aren't you? Oh, you know what? Since you're pregnant with Tom's kid, I'll reluctantly allow you to stay in my house until you pop out my beautiful grandchild. But once that's done, you'll have to divorce my son and get out of this house for good. Of course, my grandchildren will be staying with me and Tom. Don't you worry, we'll raise them to be outstanding individuals. In fact, they'll have a much better life without a horrible mother like you polluting their existence. Don't you even realize that your son is right here with me? Reading through all the vile messages you've been sending. What? How dare you show my messages to Tom? Who do you think you are, snitching on me like that? Hey there, 
aren't you forgetting something? Tom happens to be my husband, so naturally, he'd want to know about the person who's been harassing his wife. Come back here now, you filthy pig. Come back home and I'll teach you a lesson. Hey, Mom, it's Tom. I can't believe you would come up with something so despicable, like insulting and kicking Annie out of our house when she was at her lowest point. Honestly, Mom, you're becoming more and more unbearable. Tom? Oh, thank goodness you've arrived. Have you witnessed the relentless torment Annie has been subjecting your dear old mother to? She's been hurling nothing but hurtful words in my direction, and I had no other option but to stand up for myself and fight back. Defend yourself? From what I can see, you're the one who's been bullying and verbally harassing my wife. Even when she told you she wasn't feeling well, you kept pestering Annie to go out and buy you a chocolate cake? Seriously? Sending a sick person to get cake? Who in their right mind would come up with such a ridiculous idea? No, you have to listen to me. You're completely misunderstanding everything. It's not what you think it is. She framed me, I tell you. I'm sorry, Mom, but I can't let you live with me and my wife again, especially now that my wife is expecting our child. Based on your behavior and the way you've been expressing yourself, I highly doubt you'll change your attitude anytime soon. That's why I have no choice but to ask you to move out of my house. What? Are you seriously forcing me to leave? How could you do this to your own mother? Have you lost your humanity? When did you change and become so heartless? I haven't changed at all, Mom. I'm still the same person I've always been. What I'm doing is simply protecting my wife. Where do you expect me to go? Live on the streets? This is absolutely unfathomable. I can't believe you would leave me with nowhere to go, with no place to call home. How could you be so heartless? After all these years, all the sacrifices I made for you, this is how you repay me? I never thought it would come to this, that my own flesh and blood would cast me aside so callously. What am I supposed to do now? How am I supposed to survive? If you want, I can help you find an apartment for rent. Or we can look into arranging a place for you in a nursing home. But I want to make it clear that I won't be covering the costs. I know you still have a substantial amount of money from Dad's inheritance, right? Please, Tom, you can't be this harsh towards your own family, can you? My dear, please listen to your mother. I've truly recognized my mistakes and I've genuinely transformed into a better person. I promise you, if you allow me to live with you, I won't cause any trouble. I'll treat Annie with the same love and care as if she were my own daughter. Tom, are you there? Tom. In the end, Becky had no choice but to leave the house and find a new place to live. However, it was clear that she still held a grudge against me. On the day I gave birth to my son, somehow, she found out which hospital I was in and attempted to take my baby away from me. Thankfully, I caught her in the act just in time and stopped her from doing that terrible deed. Becky didn't get away with her actions, as she was immediately caught and later sentenced to prison for kidnapping. It was a distressing experience, but the safety of my child was secured, and justice was served. My husband and I are still filled with joy and adjusting to our new life with our precious little angel. We have fully embraced the responsibilities and blessings of being parents, promising to support and stand by each other no matter what challenges we face. Together, we are determined to navigate life's highs and lows, cherishing every precious moment and overcoming any obstacles that may come our way.